The following video covers some rules for setting up a local GNSS base station for use with machine control and or other RTK rover systems. It also covers some base station troubleshooting techniques because poor RTK rover performance might be caused by base station issues. When troubleshooting RTK issues on the machine or RTK rover, it might be necessary to evaluate the base station. And everything starts with a good base station setup. This matters because poor satellite quality on the base station will impact the machine and other RTK rover performance. This is because the RTK rover on the machine, this would be the left MS receiver, is combining base GNSS data with its own GNSS data to compute RTK positions. The base GNSS data is transmitted to the machine over a data link as CMR or RTCM messages, which we call corrections for simplicity reasons. The following factors on the base station site may negatively impact the GNSS signal quality. A poor choice of base station location, which may result in multipaths, obstructions, or radio range issues. The base station type itself. A GNSS signal jammer in the vicinity of the base. A defective GNSS antenna on the base and long base antenna cable runs. The following slides will provide more details on each of the bullet points. That's why there are a few important rules for a good base station setup. Make sure that on the antenna there is a clear view to the sky, which means that you should avoid vertical obstructions such as buildings, deep cuttings, side vehicles, tree canopy, and so on. A clear view to the sky allows the base to track the maximum possible number of satellites. Also place the GNSS and radio antennas as high as possible. Also pay attention to that the GNSS antenna must be stable and should never move from its position after a site calibration has been performed. And a high radio antenna is important for an optimized radio range. Trimble also recommends that the GNSS antenna should stay a minimum of 400 meters away from radar, TV or cell communication towers. Avoid sources of electromagnetic interference like gasoline engines, TV and PC monitors, alternators, generators, electric motors, power converters, switching power supplies, and so on. In addition, consider power supply issues, especially in remote areas. Environmental consideration should play a role too. Protect the GNSS receiver from excessive heat and water ingress. Last but not least, there are also safety considerations like theft protection or protection from accidental damage by machines. This slide shows some good base station setup. Notice the clear view to the sky and that there are no reflective surfaces which are impacting signal receptions. Here are a few examples for poor base station setups. Notice that an antenna is located near reflective surfaces or working machinery or close to trees. And on the lower right, the GNSS receiver mounting is not stable. The left picture shows an example for a very poor base station setup. Note that the base antenna is mounted inside a metallic cage, which is good for theft protection, but is not suitable for use with RTK system because this can cause multipass, signal obstructions, and signal interruptions, which we call cycle slips. This may result in very poor machine accuracies and frequent loss of high accuracy on the machine. For troubleshooting, a first check might be to see where the base is located. When the machine is having issues, check the file diagnostics.txt, which will be created when taking a Z-snap. It has the base station information included. Things to check for are where on earth the base is located, why this matters. This may matter because certain parts of the Earth are affected more than others by GNSS signal degradation due to atmospheric scintillation events and solar flares. And also check if the base is located near an airport or a military installation. The term multipass has been mentioned a few times since it is one of the major factors impacting rover performance. What is it? It means that satellite signals are being reflected by objects near the antenna. Could be the base or the rover antenna, doesn't matter. 
As a result, the satellite signal arrives multiple times at the base antenna. It might even be that only reflected signals arrive and the direct signal is obstructed. Two or even three signals from the same satellite confuse the receiver and as a result, positioning errors occur. When troubleshooting RTK performance, you should also consider the base station and antenna types. If it is a Trimble base station, keep in mind that newer receivers like the R750 have advantages over older models since older models have less good satellite signal tracking performance. And also check the installed firmware and if there is a known issue in this particular firmware version. Another thing to check is the antenna type. A Zephyr 3 geodetic antenna is ideal because it has a ground plane for unwanted signal rejection. In addition, it has a four-point antenna feed point for better phase center stability, which results in better accuracy on the RTK rover side. And it has a 50 dB antenna gain, which matters when using long antenna cable runs to the base receiver. For example, using a GA830 antenna is less good because it has only two antenna feed points, which results in lesser accuracy, and it has 45 dB antenna gain only. Therefore, only short antenna cables can be used to avoid signal loss. Many customers are having a mixed fleet and using third-party base stations like Leica, Topcon, Septent Trio and others. Be aware that there might be possible interoperability issues. To avoid them, make sure that the third-party base is not set up to output CMR Plus messages. Always use RTCM message output and here use the latest possible RTCM 3 version for best compatibility. In addition, use always the latest third-party and Trimble receiver firmwares. There's a Trimble community page which has more detailed information on using third-party bases. Another factor that may impact machine performance is poor satellite tracking on the base station side. Tracking issues can be caused by multipath, the atmosphere, a bad antenna or antenna power issues, long antenna cable runs between base receiver and base antenna, obstructions or GNSS signal jamming. To troubleshoot tracking issues, you should log in to the base station's web interface and check the satellite tracking table, which allows to detect poor satellite tracking. In addition, SPS 986 R780 and R750 receivers have built-in spectrum analyzers. These allow to detect interference on the GNSS frequency spectrum. The screenshot on this slide shows the satellite tracking table in the base station's web interface. What to check here? Check that the values for the carrier noise ratio, which indicate the signal strength of the satellite tracking, are at a reasonable level for each frequency. Low carrier noise ratio values mean that the signal is weak. This may mean that the GNSS antenna cable is too long. In this case, check the cable type and length and consider to use a better quality cable with less signal loss. Check also that both L1 and L2 frequencies are being tracked. If only L1 is being tracked on the base, then the machine will remain in D GNSS mode and never go into RTK fixed mode. Possible reasons for L1-only tracking could be a defective antenna. We have seen issues with some GA830 antennas losing the capability to track L2 over time. And the signal jammer like a radar could be causing loss of L2 signal as well. Also, check the stability of the carrier noise values. They should be fairly stable over time and no rapid changes should occur. Note that rapid changes are an indication for GNSS signal jamming. Another tool that can help with troubleshooting tracking issues is the spectrum analyzer. It comes in the R750 or R780 receivers as a standard feature and can be enabled via option code in an SPS 986. This code can be obtained from Trimble support. The spectrum analyzer allows to display the GNSS center frequencies and shows unwanted signals in the spectrum. If you see spikes there, these are indicators for GNSS signal jamming. For more details on using the Spectrum Analyzer, you can refer to the GNSS Receiver Online Help. 
Another thing to check when troubleshooting a base station is the base station antenna. Always make sure that the correct antenna type has been selected. You can do that in the receiver's web UI. This is because the receiver voltage output to the antenna port depends on the selected antenna model. When in doubt, measure the voltage output to the antenna port with a voltmeter. Then check the antenna specification sheet if the voltage requirements are met. And always, in case of issues, you may try to use another antenna or another antenna cable and see if this improves performance. And this concludes the video. Thank you for your attention.